Have you ever wondered how good you have to be in order to be good enough? Hey guys, it's me again, Douglas. And hey, have you ever have you ever felt like no matter how hard you try, no matter what you do, you're just not good enough? Like you just feel like a terrible person and you, you can't imagine how anyone could ever love you and you're just sure that that God hates you? Do you ever feel like that? I feel like a lot of us have felt that way, and that is a very, a very painful feeling. And when we see others feeling that way, it just seems like a good, natural thing to do to, to go to them and to, to comfort them. And it is, but I feel like we go about it the wrong way, right? Because I feel like a lot of times when we find someone who is just beating themselves up for being such a terrible person, we, we want to go to them and say, oh, no, you're not that bad. You're a good person. But you know what? Here's the truth. You're not a good person. Now, that seems like the most unhelpful thing that you could ever say in the world, but but it is actually important. Because we should encourage those who, who feel unlovable, but we should encourage them with truth, not with lies. Like if somebody drinks a bottle of poison, and they say, oh no, I think I just drank a bottle of poison. It's not at all helpful to say, mm, nope, you didn't drink a bottle of poison, you're totally okay. You know, if you were to say that to them, they might feel relieved and, and think, oh wow, good. I really thought I drank some poison there. Thanks for letting me know that I'm okay. You know, they might feel better for a minute and then, you know, drop dead. It's much better to say, yeah, you did drink some poison. Here, quick, drink this antidote. The helpful truth is that even though we have sinned, even though we're not good people, God loves us anyways. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you've done or are currently doing. God loves you. And he sent his one and only son, Jesus, to die for you. And he didn't do that because you're perfect. He did it because you're not perfect. See, the Bible says that the penalty for sin is death. And that death is, is eternal death, an eternity apart from God. That's, that's hell. Now, I don't use that word lightly because that's a bad word. But hell is a, is a place, a bad place that we do not want to go but we all deserve to go because of our sin. Sin is anytime we do something wrong, anytime we do something that we shouldn't do. And we all, everyone except for Jesus, sin. You know, there was this time in the Bible where, where a, a man asked Jesus a question. He said, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus started by responding, why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. Now, Jesus wasn't telling the man not to call him good because Jesus is God. Jesus is and was and will always be good. But the rest of us? Mm -mm. Even if we think we're good people, we're not. We've sinned. We do sin. But God showed his own love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You see, the penalty for sin is death, but God so loved the world, and that includes you. Again, no matter what you've done, no matter who you are, no matter what you're doing, God loved you so much that he sent his one and only son, Jesus, so that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. You are not good enough for God's love, but he loves you anyways. And you are not good enough to get into heaven, but if you believe in Jesus Christ as your savior, you will have eternal life. Not because you do what's right, but because Jesus does what's right. And Jesus sacrificed himself for you. Satan always takes what is true and twists it up into something rotten and terrible and false. And so Satan wants you to believe that if you have sinned, if you are messed up, if you are not a good person, then God hates you. And it's not true. It is true that you've sinned. It is true that you've done what's wrong. It is true that you are not a good person. But it is a lie straight from Satan to believe that God doesn't love you because of that, or that God could never forgive you because of what you've done. And if Satan can't get you to believe that you're terrible and awful and and no one should ever love you, then he's going to get you to believe that you're like perfect, right? Nothing is wrong with you at all, that you are a good person. He'll try to convince you that any bad stuff that you have done or are doing is good and that you don't need forgiveness because you do good things. You are a good person. Even if you do a wrong thing here or there, you're still, a, you know, mostly a good person. And I feel like a lot of people fall into that trap as well. 
You need Jesus. The Bible very clearly explains what sin is, what's right and what's wrong. And even in our own hearts, we can know what's right and wrong, even if we try to silence that voice. And if Satan can't convince you that you are terrible, awful, scum of the earth, and God will never love you, then he's going to try to convince you that that what the Bible says is good and bad doesn't really apply to you. Satan's going to try to get you to believe that whatever you think is good is good. And I tell you what, there's, there's a lot of people in the world that are living like that's true, but there are also a lot of people in church that think that they are good people and that whatever they do is good because they've got you know some sort of argument for why it's good, why it's okay for them to hate their neighbor, why it's okay for them to lie, why it's okay for them to be proud or arrogant, why it's okay for them to disregard the poor or the needy. No one is good except God alone. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But if you believe in Jesus Christ, then you will be saved from the eternal consequences of your sin. So you might be thinking to yourself, oh, well, if I believe in Jesus, then I'm good enough, right? I'm a good person because I believe in Jesus. And that's partly true, right? As far as punishment is concerned, you are perfect. When you stand before the judgment seat, God will see Jesus Christ when he looks at you. You will see Christ's perfection, his holiness, and not your imperfection in your sin. But when you believe in Jesus Christ, that's not that's not the end. That's just the beginning. If you believe in Jesus Christ, one day you'll go to heaven and you'll never sin again. But here on earth, that's another story. In the Bible, the Apostle Paul, who I think we can all agree was a Christian by the time he was writing the many books he wrote in the New Testament, he talked about his struggle with sin. How he, he knew what was right, but he still did what was wrong. And he longed for the day when he would be in heaven where he wouldn't have to have that struggle anymore. He wouldn't have to work so hard to do what was right. It is not at all right to say, well, now that I'm saved, I can just do whatever I want, right? No, not at all. We should absolutely strive to do what is right. And, and God would love to help us with that. God wants us to be the best version of ourselves that we can be here and now on earth, not just in heaven. But we don't try to be good and and do what's right and and be holy as God is holy. We don't do that stuff so that God will love us. God has always loved us. He loved us when we were his straight-up enemies. No, we live our lives in obedience to God because that is our best life. It's best for us and it's best for the world. Again, Satan tries to lie to us in so many ways. And one of the big lies that, that Satan tries to tell us is that living your way is the best way. That your quote-unquote truth is truth. And that what God says is just suggestions that often get in the way of our true happiness. That's not how it works. The Christian life is hard. I'm not going to lie. It's difficult. But it's so good. It is, it is what you are looking for. A life lived for God is the best life ever. And man, if you are believing in Christ to save you from your sins, but you're still like actively living in sin, that's... That's like somebody saying, oh, well, I took this antidote for poison, so I'm just going to chug this poison all day. Not, you know, it might not kill you because you got the antidote, but it's still going to mess you up big time. And that's exactly what Satan wants. If Satan can't snatch you out of heaven, he's really going to try to mess up your life here on earth. And he's going to do that with sin. And you know what? Our sin doesn't just mess our own lives up. It messes up those around us. The sins of Christians can keep other people from believing in God. And that's exactly what Satan wants. So my challenge to you guys today is that if you are feeling like like God hates you, I want you to know that he doesn't. He loves you. He died for you. And he wants to live with you forever in heaven. And he wants to help you be the person you were always meant to be here and now. But if you're one of those people who feel like you're a good person, whether you're a Christian who feels like you're a good person and you're not doing anything wrong, or or you're a non-Christian and you feel like you're a good person and you don't need any forgiveness, you don't need Jesus, I want you to know that no one is good except God alone. We need Jesus. And in this life, we can always be improving. We can always be walking one step closer to God. And if you believe in Jesus... As a disciple of Jesus Christ, it is our responsibility to work hard and and be the best that we can be, not only for our own selves, but maybe even especially for for the world around us. We have the privilege and responsibility to, to shine as lights in this dark world, to share the good news of Jesus Christ with everyone that we meet. 
not only with our words, but with our actions. So the answer is no, you're not a good person, but Jesus is, and he loves you very much. And Jesus wants to save you from your sins and and to help you be the very best person that you can possibly be, the best you that you can be, not because you deserve it, but because he loves you. Hey guys, I hope you like this video. And yeah, man, this this was a tricky episode cuz cuz it is it is good to encourage others, but but it's important to encourage people in truth. And so it seems like it's encouraging to say, "Oh no, you're a good person. You're not a bad person." It seems like a nice good thing to do to tell everyone that there's nothing wrong with them. To say, "You are enough." But we're not enough. Jesus is enough. Jesus is more than enough, and we need him. And so I really hope that you will, will share the good news of Jesus Christ in a way that is, that is helpful to people. You know, not just coming at people saying, you're terrible, you're awful, you're the worst, God hates you. That's, that's not what God wants us to do. God wants us to share the truth in love. Yeah, we all sin. We're not good people. But God loves us anyways. So much to send his son, Jesus, to die for our sins so that we could live forever with him in heaven. And so that here on earth, we could be the best versions of ourselves that we could be. Let's shine as lights in this dark world.